Are you having doubts about your relationship with God? Have you ever asked yourself, what do God think about me? It is important to pray and congregate with believers. But we have to be careful that we don't judge our relationship with God based on how we engage in traditions, formalities, and rituals. The devil condemns, but God convicts by his spirit. When the devil condemns, he makes you feel bad about yourself. But when God convicts, it's a gentle nudge that is kind and loving. He also shows you how to make necessary corrections if something is not right about someone or something, or something is keeping you from doing the right thing. Then he will make changes, open the doors of opportunities for you to do what is right. Romans chapter 8 from verse 1 to 2 says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. The scripture says, in other words, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-saving Spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. It also says, for every temptation, he will make a way of escape. Your relationship with God and your mate or loved ones is not just about saying things. It's about doing it. Being in a relationship with God and others is listening, feeling, and observing. Relationships involve five senses. You see, you hear, you smell, touch, and taste. And it also includes spiritual senses, your innermost being and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. When you truly pray, you just don't say everything on your mind. Then you get up and go, and go about your business. If you did that to your mate or others, they would not appreciate nor giving any opportunity to express yourself next time. Prayer is a two-way conversation. Yes, you can tell God what's in your mind and heart. But it's also waiting to let Him minister to you. Sometimes you don't have to say a thing because He is all-knowing. The scripture says, He knows what you need before you ask. Since He's all-knowing, you can just spend time being quiet. And that is prayer. Then wait to see what he says to your innermost being, and that's your spirit. Sometimes he won't show you anything. It's okay, because you spend time with him, waiting, waiting on the Lord, and that's what we call prayer. Then sometimes he will show you things in nature, or reveal to you through other people that will give you an answer or better understanding of what you already know or what you are about to do. That prayer is called supplication. That is prayer also. Because you spend time with him, observing things and people around you and waiting on the Lord. Moses asked the Lord, show me your face. In other words, he wanted to know God. But to know God is to learn how to just be in a moment. The scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. That is having a consciousness that God is all around you. And you have the opportunity to experience him as he reveals himself to you. He is omnipotent. He will never leave or forsake you. The Holy Spirit is always with you. Being in a relationship with God is allowing yourself to rest in the Lord. He says, Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavenly burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest doesn't mean you have to do nothing, but it's coming to an assurance that no matter what you are doing and not doing, you have everything you need, and God 
is with you. It is love, peace, happiness, goodness, grace, compassion, mercy, everything, every virtue, the great I am. You don't have to strive or work hard to make yourself known to God or to seem righteous to Him. The scripture says, let your light so shine among men that they will see your good works. When you learn to just be with the Lord, there is a presence of the Holy Ghost that is with you. There is a presence of the Lord Jesus Christ that surrounds you. That is the light that the scripture is talking about. The light that will be so evident in your life that it will cause changes in your relationships, circumstances, and environment. The Bible is your greatest tool to learn how to be in a relationship with God, to give you courage to face life as a child of God. So my brethren, let me leave you with this. You are a child of God. And next time, when life puts you in a tough situation, instead of saying, why me? Say, try me. God bless you. Amen.